am now. All right, we'll take a roll call. Suzanne Spellin. Brian Bar. Here. Albert. Here. Okay, hi everybody. Hello. So Tony, Tony, we don't have the meeting minutes, do we? Uh, no, not just done yet. So yeah, my apologies. That's okay. So we're going to table that. Let's move to the, we're gonna make a motion to adjourn to executive session. For what, attorney-client privilege discussion regarding? I, ha it's, I had- It's on, on the agenda. Huh? Yeah, I just put that on there because I thought you might want it on there. So if you don't, then I guess there's nothing to talk about. Um, no, we, we do to bring over, um, but up to speed and hopefully Suzanne. Um, so do you want to wait until well, let's talk the other yeah. items because I already know what's going on in case yes. it happens. Okay. Good idea. So, all right. So, all right. So Tony, for the monthly board agenda, the 2021 city disposition list. Yes. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm texting while I'm talking probably dangerous. Oh my goodness, multitasking for you. Um, hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, the city disposition list, um, this will be a repeat conversation for some folks. Um, an hour or two ago, I sent out um, a list of what I thought would be a decent list to present to the city and um, at the A&D meeting. Um, Brian and Heather thought that was a good list. Uh, Jeanette said she took a look at it, but didn't sound like she took a hard look at it. Um, didn't have the time to. Um, so uh, my marching orders from a &D were basically to um, sit down with Steve Strikeman and talk about what's on the list and see where it goes from there. So um, oh, El did you get that file? We um, sent it just yeah. later, late this afternoon. I just took a quick look at it. Okay, yeah. I no, just that... took a quick look at it. I, mean, um, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it yet, so. <laughs> I thought, that's, <laughs> it's, it's probably confused you more than it's helped you. Um, <laughs> so what I tried to do was, um, uh, let me take this back a step. Uh, in 2019, the city changed their property disposition code uh, we used to have to apply like everyone else, um, but they changed it. And now all we have to do is submit a list of the properties we want. Um, and if the city is feeling like those are the properties that they want to give us, they give them to us at no cost to us. We have to pay uh, you know, oh, for title okay. uh, and uh, attorney fees, but it's zero dollars to the city Troy. Uh, the last time we did this, um, we kind of negotiated with the city and they gave us two properties of good value. Um, and we took, I believe, five properties that needed a lot of work. So that helped to uh, kind of set off the balance. So with this list, my thinking was, okay, there are some really distressed properties in the target area. So they should really be represented on this list, but there are also some really good properties on the list as well. So I included kind of a, a mixture of both in hopes that the city will, you know, see itself clear to um, give us a balance. Um, one thing I'll say about this list is that it is, I think it, it was a much better list than it was uh, in previous years. So that's, that's a good thing. What makes it better, uh, Tony? Just the number of properties the, or the value of the properties? or I think the value of the properties. I think, uh, I mean, maybe it's a sad thing, but um, I think maybe people who um, in better financial times might not have lost property, um, did lose property. So I, I just say this real quick. The, uh, there's was one, one guy who, who finally owned the property he was in since 1820. He could come up with all but $200 to pay the tax bill, the city wouldn't accept it. So he said, go to hell the city Troy, and he walked away from the property. So um, that's a situation where I think if it was, if it was a different year, <laughs> if it wasn't COVID, 
he might have been able to hang out of the property. So um, all that said, um, there are 13 properties on the list. The, um, One of them is, is already earmarked for part of the bigger project that we have, Albert. So there's, there's um, that would be land banked for the development of the scattered site with Beacon. The other 12 on that list are Tony and Irv went out. That's our real estate. Um, who, who, who did that? I, I just did that. So you're, you're like magic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a magic man. <laughs> so the um, other ones were kind of falling in line with what the city has done with us previously, which some good ones partnered up with some bad ones. So it was kind of A and D's thought process, and Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, that we we apply for all of them and see what we see what happens because the only cost occurred to us is the cost of obtaining title. We don't have to technically they are donated to the land bank from the city. Yep. And Kate said said to do it. So we have. So one, why two, do you? Why do you? Four, I guess my question is, why do you have to get title if it's city owned? Oh, Kate. Because <laughs> sometimes, as Kate mentioned, sometimes there are estates, and maybe in the NREM, there's there's multiple creditors or debtors. So we try to run title just to make sure that there's going to be no uh, nothing else that's going to pop up that was held up in limbo between us taking possession of it and then trying to sell it and being messy for the next person, next situation. So are all these properties, all these properties, none of these properties have uh, uh, liens on them? So, okay. Uh, so all the, in the, the, the city uh, does a tax foreclosure. Pursuant to the NREM statute, they have to serve all parties, interested parties on record as of the date the tax roll goes out. So that creates a whole host of issues. One, they may not serve all the parties properly. Two, another judgment creditor might get in between the time the tax roll comes out and the actual foreclosure, which can cloud title. And three, it's mostly selfish uh, for me and for the land bank because what uh, I learned early on in 2015 in representing the Albany County Land Bank, we were right in the middle of the sale. We were ready to, to close on all these properties and uh, the buyers came forward with all these title issues and we should have never taken the property in the first place without clear title. So um, based upon you know five, six years of experience with land banks, I don't want to see any property acquired by us that doesn't have clean title. And if it's not clean, you know, I'll tell you. And then um, if we want to fix it, I might be able to fix it by court order. But um, basically, we want to make sure that we don't run into any problems because if title isn't good, we can't sell it. And now we have a property that we have to take care of and we can't sell. <clears throat> so it's selfish. <laughs> Okay. So none of these and properties if, have mortgages on them or, or anything like that. No, if every if the in-rem was done correctly, everything should be um, you know, the liens should be stripped. That being said, and I don't like to get okay. in the weed, a weeds because it's it's a case by case thing and it's hyper technical, but yes, there could be mortgages still on these properties. And the bank sometimes doesn't know that the city foreclosed and there's a little bit of a dance we've got to oh. do there, but that would come up on a title report. So we would know before we took that property, if there was an issue, if there was a mortgage out there. All right. Yeah. Okay. So Tony, you want to the 11 Winnie change order? Yeah, so um, so eleven Winnie, um, the the rear wall, the rear foundation wall um, needs to be really replaced, 
and we've been waiting for a while for uh, Russ Reeves, our engineer, to um, do the design on that. He, he finished that last um, bu 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 Tuesday and submitted it to the city. So uh, I'm waiting to get a change order number from the Johnny Bobo, the general contractor. Um, but once we have that, and once he has that work done, this building will finally be completed. Um, Although given COVID and other things, it's moved along pretty well, um, and we can and we can uh, market it for sale, which is something we need to do sooner rather than later. So when I'm talking to Johnny, I'm going to press him to put all his energy into fifty uh, into eleven Winnie Avenue, so we can get that to market as soon as we possibly can. So Tony, what's the amount of the change order, and what resolution do we need? Well, I, that's just that. That's why I have it as pending. Oh, um, okay. I don't have the number yet. All right. So, um, I was Johnny was supposed to work on that over the weekend, and I haven't gotten anything from him as yet. So I'll have to ask him where it is. I, actually, I, I had I texted him earlier today and asked him for that and a few other things. So. Um, All right, 3229 6th Avenue. Yeah, so this one, um, according to our engineer, they're at, uh, on the sidewall near the front entrance, winter weather caused some masonry to move. And um, he's saying there needs to be stabilization work done there. Um, I went and took a look. I didn't see any movement, but you know, obviously I may not have been looking at what, what he was looking at and he's a good licensed engineer and I'm not. So um, I, I said to him, I would like to go and see what he's seeing. I also said to him, you know, Russ, if this is the kind of thing where you think we should be doing it just because we're there and it's not something that's a maintenance item that could be done, you know, further down the road. Um, um, you know, I, I'd rather, put it off, frankly, to an, not to another owner on purpose, but simply because the budget is what it is. And um, we're, we're at the point now where once we sell this, we never make a lot of money on stabilizations, but once we sell this, we probably won't see a profit. We may see a little bit of a loss, depending on how this change order, potential change order will go. Russ did say he would try to come up with a design that would um, be as minimally costly as possible. So, um, and Russ is a little bit notorious for taking a long time to get things done. So, did we start looking for someone else? Yes, we, uh, not should we, we have to. Okay. He's a great engineer, but, um, you know, He's got a lot of people frustrated. Um, George Brower is frustrated. Johnny Bubbles is frustrated. I'm frustrated. Um, I'm sure he means well, but the bottom line is, if you don't have the stuff you need to, if it takes the engineer three times longer than it takes to get the work done, which is kind of what's been happening, then there's a problem. So. Okay. And right. so uh, that's what I've got for you. Okay, is there anything else? Do you want to, I mean, Suzanne's not on still? No, I texted her the uh, meeting ID and uh, password, but I didn't get a reply back from her. All right. Well, I'm going to make the motion then so um, to go into an attorney client privilege meeting. Second. Okay. Um, so I can. With regard to 791 River. Thank you, Kate. Is there anything else, Tony, that you'd like to discuss? Albert, Brian, Kate? Nope. I'm good. Um, we're opening to close on the Ameristar loan oh. for 1120 um, on Thursday. Um, I have started to do my quarterly report for Tanya um, okay. and I'm feeling behind on it. Um, 
it. So I, I you know, it's having the property disposition stuff and the quarterly report having to be done. Um, so I, um, I'll probably be fading away from the property dis disposition stuff and jumping deeper into getting that quarterly report done. Okay. So. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All right. Uh, Albert will be okay. emailing you. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. everybody. Right. Good Bye -bye. night. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, everybody.